Hello. Our devotion for today is entitled, The Light of the World. And it is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 12 through 27. A Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, therefore, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. But no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. So he said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself since he says, Where I am going, you cannot come? Jesus said to them, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Just what I have been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you and much to judge. But he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand what Jesus had been speaking to them about the Father. In the preceding chapter, John told us that Jesus had come to Jerusalem during the Feast of Booths. It was celebrated in autumn just after the Day of Atonement, Israel's annual day of penance. When the fasting and repentance were over, the people were filled with great joy as they celebrated the Harvest Festival's Feast of Booths by staying in tents to remind them of the trek through the desert during the exodus from Egypt. Every day, the high priest and all of the people would march in a magnificent procession with water from Siloam up to the temple. Then, one of the priests would pour it out of a gold vessel onto the altar as an offering. While the people rejoiced and sang a verse from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 12, verse 3, which states, With joy you will draw water from the well of salvation. It was in connection with this festival that Jesus spoke, spoke about streams of living water flowing from the souls of those who came to him to drink. After this, the festival continued throughout the night in the woman's courtyard. The offering chests were there, and everyone who belonged to Israel's people had access to them. Huge candelabras were lit. The Levites played musical instruments from the steps to the inner courtyard, and the people held torches and danced. It was a popular and very exhilarating national festival. It could have been 
the morning after this festival that the adulteress was led to Jesus, as is told early in this chapter. Jesus was likely alluding to all of the lights that lit up the darkness just hours before when he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. God is light, John says. Paul says he lives in light. This light was the life of man. But we live in darkness. Each of us has something inside of us that loves the darkness rather than the light. Now the true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world with Christ. John says this in chapter 3, verse 19. And whoever follows this light, the light of life, will never walk in darkness. But if he doesn't follow the light, he will remain in the darkness and die in their sin. Everything Christ has to tell us about the light, life, joy, and peace, has this darkness surrounding it. Now, this isn't something that everyone has, simply because there is a God. But rather, it is something that saves us from darkness, from death, and from evil. Jesus tells us that we remain in darkness if you do not believe that I am he. The original text simply says, believe that I am this particular expression appears two more times in this chapter. The Jews wondered what Jesus really meant by these words. And when they finally understood, they wanted to stone him. Because Jesus was alluding to God's very own name. The name he revealed to Moses in the burning bush. When he commanded him to go to Israel's children in Egypt and say, I am has sent me to you. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. This name expresses the idea that God is the only one who possesses life itself and is the only one who exists eternally. He is the beginning, the origin of everything that exists. To be, to exist, to endure are qualities that belong to God and come as gifts from him. We are servants that he has chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. Let us pray. Lord, we praise, thank, worship, and honor you because you are who you are, because you exist, because you are reality. He who is of eternity, the true life and the light that never goes out. We thank you because you haven't kept your life for yourself, but desired to give it to us also. We thank you because you are our origin the basis of our existence, the meaning and purpose of our lives. We thank you because this is the first, the deepest, the truest, the last, and the ultimate in existence that you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.